provider as a library of probes. And providers basically do two things for us. Providers facilitate instrumenting a particular subsystem because they know how to. We made D-Trace extensible when we designed it, so we built that knowledge into providers. And the other thing providers do for us is they give us probes with meaningful and intuitive names such that if we want to use D-Trace to do analysis, we don't necessarily need to become an expert in the kernel and buy a copy of Solaris Internals, although I'd encourage you all to do that. Now, um, for example, I have a provider called the I.O. provider. And hopefully you folks in the back can see that. So this is uh, dtrace-l says lists the probes on my system, and then I use some option flags, and I said just list the probes in the I/O provider. But this is the way all probes look like in dtrace. All probes have a numeric ID associated with them. Forget about it. You're never going to use it. You don't need to know about it. Provider module function name. Those are the four components that make up every dtrace probe. Provider module function name. The provider is typically a named provider, or, or, or um, yeah, it's typically a named provider. The module in the case of kernel probes is typically the name of the kernel module the probe resides in. The function is typically the name of the kernel function the probe reside, resides in. And then the name is, in some cases, a meaningful name. Now, why did I show you this? You're chasing a performance problem. You want to take a look at this guy. How many performance problems are disk I.O. related? In my experience, at least half, OK? Um, and you can solve them once you get the, before I say this, does anybody in here work for the storage group in their data center? Okay. So you can solve them by working closely with the storage group in the data center. <laughs> now, um, let's say you want to chase an I.O. problem. If you've ever looked at the disk I.O. stack uh, and what actually is involved in order for me to read and write a file on a disk, it's a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of software. In fact, the more I look at it, the more I'm amazed that it works at all. You may want to chase a disk I.O. problem, but you don't have the time or inclination to become a disk I.O. expert. Use the disk I.O. provider. Here this provider has a probe called I.O. start. That's a probe that fires when I start a disk I.O. I.O. done. That's a probe that fires when I finish a disk I.O. Wait done, or wait start. That's a probe that fires when I start an I.O. and my thread is now waiting for it to complete. And wait done is a probe that fires when I'm done waiting for a disk I.O. So I can just use probes with these names, and I could say, you know, dtrace n, and I'm going to say I.O. start. Um, I want to take a look at something every time I start a disk I.O. Maybe I want to uh, just track the name of the process that generated the disk I.O. All right. You're going to see a lot of that tonight. <laughs> Um, I apologize for that. Okay, so what did I do? I just said, dtrace-n says I'm going to give you the name of a probe. The name of the probe is the start probe in the I.O. provider. And what I did is I used a count aggregation. Um, I'm using exec name, which is a built-in dtrace variable. This is all going to make more sense over the course of the next 30 minutes. Like I said, drinking from a fire hose, trial by fire. Exec name is a built-in dtrace variable that gives me the name of that process that was running when the probe fired. Basically what I did is I just told dtrace, every time somebody starts a disk I.O., tell me the name of the process that initiated it. Tell me the name of the process that was on CPU. Control C, terminal A to session, and I didn't have anything interesting going on on my machine. I have a process called zpool-rpool that initiated 156 disk IOs. But think about what I just did with a simple command line, and think about extracting that information on any other system. I just used a simple command line that said, show me everybody that's starting a disk I.O. That's a really, really, really obvious question to ask about what your system and what your workload is doing. It's a really, really hard question to get an answer to on any other system that doesn't have D-Trace. Think about it. It's, it's, you know, it's, just, it's, 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 it's an amazing thing. So going back to how we got here. How did we got, get here? We got here because we were talking about providers. And what I told you was is providers do two things for us. They manage bunches of probes, and they also give us probes that have meaningful names that allow us to use D-Trace to explore complex areas of the system without becoming an expert in that system. Here's another uh, in that particular subsystem. For example, uh, all right, so that, um, crap. 
that wrapped a bit. Let me see if I can make this a little wider. Oh, that's great. Okay. There's a provider called the Sketch Provider, which manages probes in the kernel scheduler. The kernel scheduler is an extremely complex bit of kernel software. As you can imagine, it's what's responsible for scheduling threads on and off CPUs, managing priorities, scheduling classes, the whole enchilada. Well, that's going to be a very interesting subsystem for you to look at when you're trying to understand what your system is doing and or you're chasing performance problems. But you know, again, do you have the time or inclination to become an expert on how the kernel scheduler works? Maybe not. No problem. The sketch provider has probes called on CPU. That's a probe that fires every time a thread is placed on a CPU. Off CPU is a probe that fires every time a thread is taken off a CPU. Sleep is a probe that fires every time a thread is put on a sleep queue. And wake up, which is further down, is a thread that fires every time I wake up a thread. And there's others too. The point I'm making here is, with these providers that Dtrace gives us, I have probes that have meaningful and intuitive names that allow me to instrument complex areas of the system, and, can I, and I can look at things like scheduling activity without having to become an expert on the kernel scheduler. So just, you know, again, as a quick example, I can say Dtrace-N, and this time I'm gonna say sketch uh, on CPU. And I'm going to use basically just the same thing I used last time, only I'll add a second field. And again, I'm going to tell you more about this in just a minute. <clears throat> so this time I said Dtrace turn on uh, the on CPU probes in the sketch provider. Now remember I said every Dtrace probe has four components to its name. Provider, module, function, name separated by colons. If I leave a field blank when I sp specify a probe with Dtrace, Dtrace matches all occurrences for that probe. So it's similar to using an asterisk as a, in a regu regular expression uh, with the shell. It just, it just does a match on everything. So I can leave different fields blank of, of, uh, of my probe specification and Dtrace will match everything. And then I said, every time a thread goes, uh, a thread goes on CPU, this probe is gonna fire. Every time this probe fires, I'm gonna record the name of the process that was running and the thread ID within the process. And I'm going to count them all up using this function called count, which is a dtrace aggregating function, which I'm going to tell you more about in a minute. And um, basically, what am I going to see? What I'm doing is I'm using dtrace to say, I want to see who's landing on CPU. I want to see who's getting scheduled on my CPUs. And boom. Uh, what, what this is is, the exact name, the name of the process, this is what? Thread ID, yeah, because that was the second key of my aggregation, and this is the count. And one of the really nice things about dtrace is the count function gives me a nice sorted list. So if I'm chasing a problem, I can ignore the top n number of these things and just go to the counts that matter. So in this particular case, I've got some JVMs running that were on CPU, or actually that could be the same JVM um, with different, different threads within the same JVM going on CPU, and this thing called SCED, S-C-H-E-D, which simply means I was in the kernel when the probe fired. I didn't have a user context on CPU, I was in the kernel. So again, um, a very obvious question to ask about what your system and workload is doing. Who's getting on CPU? Um, there might be other ways to figure it out, but with a relatively simple dtrace command line, um, I was able to sort it out, I, I was able to get an answer to that. And again, this is just a very, very, very simple example. Um, um, it gets, you know, this is just kind of the, the, the tip of the iceberg in terms of uh, what you can do. Okay, so a probe is a point of instrumentation. A provider manages probes and gives us probes with meaningful names that allow us to instrument complex areas of the system. And then we have consumers. These are basically all of the commands that use Dtrace. Dtrace is the biggie. That's the one you're seeing me type all the time. That's the one you're going to see me use almost exclusively tonight. Lockstat, anybody know Lockstat from Solaris 7 onwards? So Lockstat, it's been a Solaris tool since Solaris 7. 
It was re-implemented in Solaris 10, 10 as a D-Trace consumer, but it basically does the same thing. It gives you statistics on kernel mutex locks and reader-writer locks, and it allows you to profile the kernel. 